going on, church? Another day, another Devo. And today, we are in the book of Psalms, and Psalm chapter 27. It's an exciting psalm. There's a lot going on in this poem, in this contemplation, in this uh, prayer amidst suffering. But I do want to focus on one verse in specific. It, psalm 27, the entire chapter, but what I want to talk about is this famous verse that is known, uh, what I believe to be known in the Christian circles, or those who believe in Christ. And if you don't know it's famous, um, I'm just letting you know that it is a somewhat famous verse, and it goes like this, Psalm 27, 4. One thing have I asked of the Lord, that will I seek after, that I may dwell in the house of the Lord all the days of my life, to gaze upon the beauty of the Lord and to inquire in his temple. Amen. Let me open us up in prayer. Heavenly Father, we ask for your grace, your mercy, to shower us over this time as we learn about your word, as I teach your word, God, that you would speak through me, Holy Spirit, you would guide me, you would open up my eyes, Father, and I, at the same time, would you open up our hearts, would you open up our eyes to see, to receive, to be changed, to be renewed, to be refreshed, to be given joy, life, light inside of this time, Lord. God, as we are declaring and praying amidst everything that goes on in the world, Lord, we, I pray, I pray that we would all know that one thing matters in this world, and it's you, God, and it's you. I pray all of this for the, your glory, for your magnification, and in Jesus' name I pray, amen. Amen. So I want to read this verse one more time. It says, One thing have I asked of the Lord, that will I seek after, that I may dwell in the house of the Lord all the days of my life, to gaze upon the beauty of the Lord and to inquire in his temple. And it sounds, right off the bat, it sounds like such a beautiful verse. You know, David's saying, I just want God. I just want one thing. I just want to gaze I just want to look upon and be enamored by his beauty. I want to spend the rest of my life with him. And I wanted to ask questions. I want to know more of God. I want to inquire. And this verse is great. It's amazing. It's encouraging. But also, we have to understand the context that it was put in. If you look at the verse, it says many times, verse 2, When evildoers assail me, when the bad people are, are coming at me, uh, my adversaries and foes. Then in verse 3, it says, Then army encamp against me. The, the war arise against me. Yes, David is saying, Yes, I'll be confident. Yes, I shall not fear. Yes, it is they who stumble and fall. But still, he's saying, Evildoers assail. There's an army encamped. There's a war rising. Even in verse 6, it says, You shall be lifted above my enemies all around me. So where is David at in this poem? There's so much evil around him. There's a, he's, He talks about it like an army, a vast army of people that are surrounded. It's all around him. And... And, and what I say is, how did he get from this place of suffering, this place of where he feels like he's just getting hit, he's getting punched at in the face from every direction possible? And how did he get to there, to verse 14, 13 and 14, where he says, I believe that I shall look upon the goodness of the Lord in the land of the living. Wait for the Lord, be strong and let your heart take courage. Wait for the Lord. How did David get there? Because church, this verse of one thing have I asked. Basically, if I could summarize it, saying, God is the only way. In some ways, this saying that God is all you need has become desensitized in our hearts. Do we, do we understand that? 
Do we understand the weight, the magnitude of knowing God and saying that He is the one thing that we need? Is that what we truly believe? Or is it, is it something that is an idea that sounds great, that we love worshiping to, but it really hasn't gone from the head to the heart yet? And so my question and challenge is I want to ask you a question because in all because from my end in all honesty I can't say church you need to love God more and expect that one sentence to change your life radically We all know that I know you all know that and if you don't know that I I pray that that you would hear that fresh for the first time and believe that But for others you may have heard that a lot in your life. You know, love God, and He should be the only way. That's why we sing when we kids, one way, Jesus. But I believe that for us who have heard this for many times, it's time to ask the question. The challenging question is, do I believe that? Is God my one thing? Is He all I want to seek after? Is He all I want to be in my life? Do I want to know more of Him? I think these are the challenging questions that we must ask ourselves. And if we don't, and if we're not where we want to be, then I think it's a great time to know that our God is loving, our God is forgiving, our God is gracious, and our God is merciful. And if we simply say, God, this is not where I'm at. It's not, you're not the one thing that I seek after. You're not the place that I dwell after. God is, for, God is forgiving. God is gracious. And He will continue to love you regardless of that confession and help you. And the Holy Spirit will help you. Honestly, that's the best we can do is to be honest before God and with ourselves and to, and to start talking and working it out with God in prayer. But now when I focus on how did he get to verse 13 to a place of, I mean, David is saying, you know, God is all I want. Even when there's, there's so many the enemies rising against me. And and when I read verses 13, 14, it's like a child when, when we were like four or five years old and Christmas Day is approaching just as, you know, we're entering the holiday season. It's going to come up fast. But when you're like four or five, all you do when it becomes to December is you are waiting in anticipation of the Lord. I mean, sorry, not the Lord, of Christmas Day, of presents, the joy of the holiday season, family. You, you, you know, you watch 25 Days of Christmas on ABC, if you guys know what I'm talking about. And you just prepare your heart. It's like the, it's the one thing. And you get ready and you get ready. And sometimes when it comes to the 24th Christmas Eve or the 23rd when you're off of school and you have no responsibilities or, you know, if you're eight or nine, you don't, you're not going to school anymore. You're like, oh, mommy, daddy, can I just open a present? Why can't Christmas come sooner? Oh, why do I have to go to bed? Why can't I just, why can't it just be Christmas already? And I think that is the attitude and the heart and the hope that we need to carry, that we need to start asking ourselves, where has that hope gone? That are we waiting in anticipation of God for the day when He comes, that it's that we are seeking Him in the meantime. It's an action, just as the child is seeking these presents, seeking the joy of of, of family time, of, of that Christmas day with the lights. Are we seeking God in action in that meantime? Because all we want to do is dwell in the house of the Lord and we want to learn more, inquire, asking questions, learning more about God. Church, I hope and pray that Psalm 27.4 becomes a reality in every one of our lives. But it's between you and God and the joy of knowing the Lord. The truth is always the truth. And it is always in the word. Wait for the Lord. Be strong. And let your heart take courage. Wait for the Lord. Amen.